Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm sure you guys, uh, most of you guys should know who I am. My name is Nathan. Uh, this is my third and final year at TCI, so long haul. Been a long one, but a good one. So lots of good lessons, so I'm grateful for it, and uh, you'll see a little bit of what I've learned uh, acted out on the stage today. So I want, you guys, I want to take you guys back in time a little bit, about three and a half to four years ago, and it wasn't a good time. Now, there was a certain election involving a certain person, I think you know who I'm talking about, over in North America, yeah? So, we had Facebook blowing up with crazy memes, people getting blocked, we had uh, people saying like, uh, like, I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore, you're not my friend, Instagram, same kind of thing, people getting cancelled, Twitter, it was just all out craziness. And then anywhere you could kind of leave a comment, or anywhere you could sort of have a voice, craziness, just utter craziness. Now, you're probably asking, I, I can see the wheels turning in your guys' heads, like, Nathan, like, what does that have to do with the Christian faith? Well, why I'm bringing that up is um, that I've seen a lot of that same stuff going on in, like, Christian Bible groups, and just any other place where you could have a Christian chat with somebody. So what I want to do is the exact opposite of that, because I think what that's really done is it's just muddied the waters for people who are looking on from the outside at our faith and just go, whoa, I don't want anything to do with that. So what I want to do here is I just want to simplify a few things, focus on a few truths, and then you know hopefully help us land on a few points that we can take home. Come on with me. All right, so uh, we're, we're going to go back in time in my life, not in, not in that election's life. Uh, and the sad thing is, is it was actually a pretty dark time for me. So I was really young, and I, I'd always had identity issues. I, I always just didn't really know who I was, and I had a hard time standing on my own two feet, you know? And... I just made some decisions that not only affected me, it affected an organization that I was uh, connected to, and it also affected just random people's lives that were around me. So a lot of what I was getting was I was getting, hey, you're over there, like, you, you know, you got some sin to clean up over there. You know, I was getting some of the finger wagging, like, we told you, you know, we had a little discussion about that, you shouldn't have been doing that. And to be quite honest, it was just not a good relational time for me, you know? Um, really tough, and so I had that going on, and then not only that, I had my own internal battles going on, like, like I was looking for who I was in this moment that I was really struggling, like I'm sitting here and going, who am I? And meanwhile, I'm looking at them trying to find out, well, maybe they could tell me who I am, but they're not around, so the good thing is, is who, who, who's got a best friend? Who's got a best friend that they can rely on? So yeah, so we've all got a best friend, right? Now, I have this super awesome, amazing best friend, and, and I just love my best friend with my whole heart. He's amazing. He's the kind of best friend that always shows up just when you need him, you know? He's the kind of guy that's just, he's there till the end. <clears throat> so just when I thought we were going to have the talk, because, you know, good friends, what they do is, Typically, when things go wrong, what happens is, is they go, okay, we're going to sit down, buddy. We're going to have the, you know, the guy-to-guy -guy chat, you know, and we're going to talk about the horrible mistake you just made. Then I'm going to tell you what you shouldn't have been doing, and then I'm going to kind of like browbeat you, right? And to be quite honest, that's exactly what I was expecting, because I think most of us, if you'd made the mistake I did, which I'm not going to mention now, I think you probably would think, yeah, that's, that's what should be coming to you. Somebody should be having a tough conversation with you. The decisions you made affected people's lives. But I was actually surprised, super surprised. So my friend walks up to me, and of all things, what does my friend do? He serenades me with a song. Because who knows that your friend knows the way to speak to your heart. Anybody who's a really good friend, they just have a way of saying things to you that speaks to your heart. Somebody could, you could have three people that come up to you and they tell you exactly what they're saying, but they say it in their language, the language of your heart, and it gets in there. And it does something. And what it does is it causes you to stop and go, yeah, you know, you're right. Or, oh, I never thought about it that way. So you can start having an internal dialogue with yourself, right? So, so there can be change. So this is what happens. So I'm expecting getting blasted with words, hard conversation. 
So there's this show I used to watch, and it's, this is related to music, because another thing you need to know about me is my mom, when I was a kid, always listened to music. The weekend was just blasting music that probably was too loud for the neighbors, you know? And I thought it was cool. They probably did, and that's probably why there was banging on the wall, you know? But anyway, so I grew up around music, so that's kind of the language that speaks to my heart. And my friend knew this. So I'm not going to date myself, but there was this show that I used to watch, and it had an intro to it. And I'm not going to sing, because I don't have Justin Bieber skills, so don't worry, I'm not going to bless you with my non-Justin Bieber-like skills. But this is how it goes. It says, thank you for being a friend. We've walked a thousand miles and back again. You're a pal and a confidant. Now, now just think. So I'm struggling to find my identity. I've got all these people that have said, you know, you're too much for us right now. You've got to deal with your problem. Can you imagine what that probably did on the inside of me? Like, that felt incredible because, first off, I wasn't expecting it, and it spoke the language of my heart. And the person who spoke that to me that's my best friend is the Holy Spirit. Like, I literally could feel, like, his goodness almost, like, glittering me as he was saying it. It was incredible. So why I bring that up is some people, when they talk about the Holy Spirit, they talk about almost like he's this, he's this thing that's out there. To me, he's so personal, you know? When you hear a story like that, like, his goodness, like, literally was, was just sort of, like, uh, glittering over you, it, it makes it really personal. He's no longer this robotic force that's sort of over there. He's just right up here. And the great thing was about the Holy Spirit is he got in my face in a good way. You know, so most people don't get in your face in a good way. You know what I'm saying? So he got in my face. So he's a really personal God. He's a God of relationship, and that's what I love about him. So that's my first point. So what I'm going to try and do to highlight here is just how relational he really is. Okay, so my second point about the Holy Spirit is... He is a teacher. Okay, so where do we get that from? Well, Jesus, when he was on the earth in John 14, he said, I'm going to go away. So Jesus is going away. What, what does that mean for the people he was teaching? Well, he's going away, and there's going to be some trouble coming down the road. Going to be like pagan idol worship. You know, let's go to the temple where some funky stuff goes on. You're going to get persecuted. It's just going to be some wild stuff that they've never experienced going on. So he goes, I'm going to go away, but you're going to have a teacher. And his name's going to be the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and who is the Holy Spirit? And why was he there? Well, the Holy Spirit was there because Jesus wanted us to have the exact same experience that he had with the disciples on our own. So it's almost like Jesus is with us. It's the Holy Spirit. And some of you might know this. Some of you may not. Uh, I'm a teacher, so I teach kids to speak English. And there's one thing I know about a good teacher. A good teacher uh, always looks out for the best for their students. You can always tell when a teacher actually loves their students. There's just a difference. Because when they teach the student, they get in real close. You know, They ask them how they're doing. The teachers that don't really care about the students, they're always on their phone. You know, They're always just off in the room by themselves. And that's the Holy Spirit. He's the teacher that loves us. He gets in close. So I'm going to land here on my third point. And this is probably the one that excites me the most because I did tell you guys I've always had identity issues. But <clears throat> the great thing is, is I don't have to worry about that anymore because in Ephesians 1 verse 13, it tells us that now that we've been saved in Christ, we're now sealed by the Holy Spirit. Now, Let's demystify the word sealed. What does that mean? Well, in Jesus' day, and a little bit ahead, what that actually meant was there was a stamp of ownership on you. Now, I, I don't want to say, like, you're owned by God, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to say anything like that, because it almost sounds kind of weird and creepy, you know what I mean? You're like, God owns me? Really? Where is he? You know? Um, I think uh, I really want to bring this home... Uh, just because I love the Indonesian people so much. One thing I love about Indonesians is their parents, man, they're so involved in their lives, man. Like, they're in there with the grades. How are you doing? What? You got a B minus? What the heck is wrong with you? 
get better grades. You know what I mean? And then they're like in there checking on their homework. You know, like I think I was talking to Dee Dee. He was talking about being a helicopter parent. You got some helicopter parenting going on there. You doing your homework? Get off their computer. <clears throat> so I don't, uh, uh, I really bring that up because I think the Holy Spirit's like that. You know, he's in there, you know, he's involved with his kids' lives. And I think that's one thing I really love about the Indonesian people is they, they exemplify that so much. They care, almost, I guess you could say to a fault, where their kids end up in life. And that's why the Holy Spirit's sealed us, because he not only cares where we end up in this life, but he sealed us for the next. And what does that do for us? When you know you're sealed for the next your identity issues are canceled out, man. Why do you have to worry about your identity? You're sealed, man. You're someone's property. You're gone. So for me, I, I wanted to land there because to me, that, that means the world, you know? So for somebody whose dad wasn't around, who uh, uh, just had, you know, was told that he was stupid, that he was an idiot, you know, that he was never going to amount to anything, for me, that really means something. That means I'm going somewhere, and when I get there, there's going to be a father waiting with his arms wide open, and I'm going to know where I belong. So just a few things I want to take away from this is, so the, the first thing I really want to bang, bring home is the Holy Spirit's totally relational. This is not transactional, robotic Christianity, right? Okay. And the second thing is, make sure you're a good Indonesian parent. Be a helicopter parent. Get in there. Figure out what your kids are doing. So. Okay, that's it for me, guys. Thanks so much, and have a good night.